Hello, in this video we want to talk about something called a subspace and before we do that it's good to review what we mean by a vector space because really a subspace is a special type of vector space. So let's just recall that a vector space is a set V together with two operations called addition and scalar multiplication such that for all vectors U, V, and W living in capital set V and real scalars R and S. Um, we've got several properties that hold and the first property is really a closure under addition and a closure under scalar multiplication. In other words U plus V is in the capital set V and R times U that also lives in capital set V. We also have uh, commutivity of addition, we have associativity of addition, there's a zero, there's an additive identity satisfying the usual properties we would expect. Um, we also have additive inverses in our set capital V and we also have some distributive properties holding. Lastly we've got associativity for scalar multiplication and a multiplicative identity for scalar multiplication where there's a one that exists in V. So any set together with two operations that satisfy all these properties that's what we mean by a vector space. And a lot of times we think about vectors as you know little arrows hanging out in R2 or R3 um, and that's a great visualization but you know vectors could be a little bit more unusual they could be a little bit um, more abstract and we will see those as we move through our linear algebra course but for now what I'd like to do is, is talk about what we mean by a subspace so Okay, so what I want to do now is talk about something called a subspace. And so let's draw a, a few pictures here. So first of all, I'm going to draw a picture. Um, and my picture it can be a big set. I'll call it set V. Okay, so here's set V. And let's say we've got a subset of V living in here. So this is a little subset. Here it is. I'm going to call that W. All right, and so W is a set lives inside of V and we say that W is a subspace of V if it is number one a subset of V so W has to be a subset of V and certainly it is in my picture and the second thing is is that W needs to be a vector space so we're, we talk about subspaces and we simply mean little vector spaces that hang out in bigger sets now you might think that this is going to be a little bit tedious to check I mean after all there's nine different properties to check for something being a vector space but you know if we have this little set W as a subset of V we really don't need to check things like um, vector addition being commutative because if you live inside V and everybody in V was commutative certainly everybody in W is commutative and the same thing is true for associativity okay um, and the same thing is true for these additive inverses and all these distributive properties and so forth so what really happens is our test for a subspace boils down to two items um, the, we have to check closure under addition and closure under a uh, scalar multiplication so what we really need to check are closure properties and notice that if these two properties hold then we get some other things for free for example um, if the scalar multiplication property holds for everybody then certainly there's a zero in our subspace because R could have been zero but I'm getting a bit ahead of myself let's do an example and see how this plays out okay so let's look at an example and the example here we want to let V be R3 so we're talking about uh, three-dimensional space we're talking about X Y and Z dimensions if you want to think of it that way and I'm gonna let W be a set of vectors so W is a set of vectors that looks like X Y and 0 
in that third component. So the first two components could be anything I want as long as they're real numbers. So let's specify that. W is the set of x, y, 0 vectors where, or such that, x and y are real numbers. Okay, so if we were to draw a picture of what this looks like, let's draw in three dimensions here. So kind of coming out of the page at you, that's the x axis going left or right, that's the y, up and down, that's our z. And so that is all of v. v is r3. We're talking about three-dimensional space there. But our set w, um, is anybody, you know, any vector in there that has an x and a y in it, but the z component is 0. So if we were to draw that, w really looks like just the xy plane living in three space okay so all the points here that have no height they have no up or down coordinate in the z all right so that's our w and we want to show that w is a subspace of v Okay, so a couple of things to check here. So the first thing we want to check is, uh, first of all, certainly the W is a subset of R3. We know this is true, so check, because look at, there's three little components here. For every vector that lives in W, there are three components, an X, a Y, and a zero. Okay, what's next? Next we have to check these closure properties. So let's check closure under addition. So to check closure under addition, here's how that goes. We need to pick any vectors. So I'm going to say pick a u and pick a v. Pick any vectors u and v that are in w. All right, so what does that mean? It means that u looks like some vector of the flavor x, y, 0. And v looks like another vector in w. I don't want to use the same letters because I'm not implying that u and v have to be equal. They just have to be the same form. So let's choose a, b, and 0 here. Okay, so we've got two generic vectors that live in W, and we want to check that when we add them up together, you know, let's say we've got a U in here and we've got another V, we want to make sure that when we add them, we still stay in this little plane, that we don't, you know, hop up here, you know, way up in some Z coordinate. All right, so we want to check closure under addition, so let's add them up. Here we go, U plus V, U plus V. This is just addition of vectors, so we're going to add up the vector x, y, 0, and we're going to add that to a, b, 0. Vector addition is component-wise, and our final answer is x plus a, second component y plus b, third component 0. And that is in w, because to live in w, it means you can be anything in the first component, anything in the second component, and the third component has to be zero. That's the rule for living in w. So this is closed under addition. Great. The next thing we need to check is something called closure under scalar multiplication. So for our third item here, I'm going to say closure under scalar multiplication. I'll say scalar mult, scalar multiplication. Okay, so we pick any u, pick any vector u that lives in w, or that's an element of w, and any scalar, I'll call it k. k is an element of the real numbers. And we want to check that um, k times u lives in w. So what do we know? We know that u looks like x, y, 0. All right. So k times vector u looks like here we go, scalar multiplication of vectors, k times x, y, 0, that just equals 
kx, second component ky, third component 0. And we check that fits the rule of w because we can have anything in our first component, anything in the second component, and that third component must be 0. That is the rule for living in w. And we meet that criteria, so it is closed under scalar multiplication.